good evening thank you i know it's been a long day how has the day been how many feel that it was excellent day today not so excellent it was the worst day of my life nothing there has to be something between these three already let's get started uh the topic of the discussion is it more about our agile you know which you is are the panacea so what do we mean by that most of the organizations who are getting into say scaling especially the large organizations there has to be certain initiatives that we spin off so that we can effectively efficiently manage this whole change etc etc there are a lot of notions associated to it are they truly delivering the goods right so specifically in the case of agile agile ceo is are they delivering the goods for us whatever the strategy that we have taken whatever approaches that we have coined for ourselves within our organizations the framework that we have developed etc are they helping us and how is it helping us so what we are going to do is it panel come fish bowl with group participation it's not a traditional way we run panels so what we thought about doing is there will be panel members so as you can see the pan our panelists are arvind from society general who heads the agile transformation rani mali who's from philips she's a senior director there doing you know practicing agile for a long time and has got this agile thing going for over a decade now then there is nagendra who comes from intel intel security who's been doing the enterprise agile transformation for last four plus years and ivan who's who's currently in ibm and who's an author of the book and has seen about agile coes and how it works so th those are the eminent panelists that we have who will be seated here we also have the fifth chair which is going to be empty um the way we want to turn it around is i don't want to be asking those questions and moderate this whole session unlike the traditional panel discussion that we have so what we thought we'll do it better or differently this time around is we'll get the group participation at your tables you work in groups come out with what are your three best three challenges that you have right top three things that is working well for you in terms of your agile so e contributing to the overall change and also the last question is are agile co is necessary at all yes and no so you can debate about it we time box it for 15 minutes that would surface about you know the top questions that we want to get answered from these panelists right so we go through the rounds of that each panelist will have their point of view to share as to how they have addressed some of these challenges if those challenges have not been addressed so be it if there is somebody in the audience who wants to take a stab at you know how they have actually overcome those challenges you are welcome to come back onto the panel there's a swift chair open for you come back and talk about that specific point as to how you have addressed them or it could be on a topic that agile coes have not helped us fair enough when we get to that point you could come back and defend your point saying why it is not contributing etc so let it be more interactive more participation oriented from you so that our takeaways are much better instead of we channelizing the discussion the way we want it to be right let's take control of the overall yeah and know what a coe is or who's not in the coe two of them three all right coe abbreviation from point of view center of excellence large initiative large changes that we want to go about doing it this is the change group that has been set up this is an initiative that is run and these are the experts in the domain and as far as agile concerned they are all consisting of agile experts and they contribute to the change across the organization so that's two minute about what a co is and how they contribute in your discussions when you have in your 15 box or 15 minute time box go about arguing or agreeing etc etc emerge out with three top things that is working well three top things that are still the challenges and we'll see what answers we can get from the panelists right so panelists will get seated once we finish this round so i'm opening the time box now 15 minutes and after that end of the thing we need to get the affinity map this will be our place where we'll put together all the three questions and we'll take you from there on to get it answered all right all of you in the back be part of one of the table discussion where you can contribute to all of them in the back if you can please come forward
टाइम टाइम साहब सो कुड वी गैदर ऑल योर टॉप थ्री लिस्ट इन टू दिस कॉर्नर हियर ऑन वन साइड एल बी चैलेंजेस ऑन दर साइड द बेनिफिट येस एंड नो two sections there that's our wall affinity wall you can put it up there those becomes our q questions for the panelists yeah 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 consolidate at your tables and come back here only with your top 3 challenges and benefits and the yes and no questions are they actually forming an affinity map put it as an affinity map um here these are your challenges please size of the org what is scaling what is so that is another item challenge lack of investment towards eoe development defer so this is a thing imply what put the comment ask our perspective correct coe uh, are considered a process group okay uh, awesome. yes. this is a different one what is this benefits individual training practice knowledge or we focus group and i think okay so this is here practice they help you that apart from reality top down one way yes and no yeah this is political signal support not outcome based what is that difficult to think of one benefit so then it is a challenge right it's a challenge it's it's not the benefit all right panelists May I request you to be seated here. Okay. So, thank you all. So, like I mentioned earlier, when we started a session, feel free to join the uh, panelists there. There is one free chair. Anybody wants to bring your point of view across, that's the chair for you. We don't want you all to lose out on that. we'll go on to take the challenges first let me summarize what has come up here uh, on the benefits lot of individual training impetus helps in building these processes share best practices and knowledge across the organization evaluate the best practices bring them to practice uh, they help in cost cutting better control over the organizations integrated functions collocation i didn't understand that so maybe we can park it focus so i'm not able to make this sorry uh, but yeah we'll park it here <laughs> so bunch of people say that it's no because it's far from reality it's too top down one way Uh, i think there are few people who said it's yes and no i don't know uh, initially i want it yes and after a period of time it's no uh, it's yes because you get political mileage there's a lot of political support hence you want it uh, there is a lot of misconception or misunderstanding uh, effectiveness is there and hence it is yes um, how do you make continuity in agile coe continuous support i don't know the question so it is yes or a no so probably we can't answer that here expectation boundary making people understand vision of agile from coe i think those are all the challenges here which will go here uh, all right so i think we have more challenges than the benefits the looks of it uh, me playing the devil's advocate i was always been after my experience with the coe i think that coes are not warranted we have better mechanisms but i don't want to you know fuel that discussion the panelists are there to talk about that uh, so we'll take a question at a time the biggest one is size of the organization versus scaling you know how do we do it and that's where the challenge is uh, i think all of the panelists represent a fairly decent scale already here uh, do you want to go rani first on how do you attack that uh, 
I'm Rani from Philips. We started the uh, Agile transformation, not as Agile transformation, but we wanted to ensure uh, whatever we deliver uh, is of right quality and uh, hit the market on time. Uh, we are in the business of doing medical devices, ultrasound, MR, X-ray, and uh, uh, clinical uh, packages, all kinds of medical devices, which is regulated. All the medical devices are regulated, and uh, typically they take uh, two to three years uh, development cycle time. This is the market I am talking about, and this initiative started uh, 2014. So I am a global program manager for this transformation, uh, and I have a 20-member team for transforming this for the entire Philips. We have, we have started with software products initially. So to answer the first question, how are we uh, addressing the scale part of it? So uh, we are located, our software teams are located at 50 locations, and uh, our total size is somewhere in a few thousand, 6,000 people in software products alone. So that's the size I'm talking about uh, across 50 locations. So the way we have adopted SAFE is end-to-end. End-to-end, we have taken the business groups, uh, and uh, the business groups, we take product line-wise. If you are uh, creating your enterprise uh, imaging archival system, yeah, that's the product line we take, and uh, from portfolio products and the team-wise, again, these are all multi-sited. Uh, minimum, there would be three sites in US, in Europe, and uh, in India as well as uh, there are many sites in uh, Israel and uh, others, uh, China as well. So these are all the various locations. Uh, any product would have minimum three, maximum of five sites. So the way we have handled this is uh, every uh, product line will get associated with a dedicated process. So the COE will be dedicated and we have created a charter and a very clear entry criteria and exit criteria. So we call it as definition of done. So when do you uh, exit out of this any engagement? So of course, there was uh, one of the discussion I heard, how do you ensure the continuity? Because this is a, I don't see this as, this as a methodology introduction. I see this as a complete uh, cultural change and the transformation. So the, uh, the uh, coaches, we call them coaches and methodologies, we associate, they are the enablers, and they are the uh, people who enable the changes. And uh, if I look at my uh, organization, uh, it's a cross-functional organization. I have uh, members who, are, uh, who have done software and they have complete knowledge. I have members from HR, I have members from communications, PR, so that they can reach the leadership team as well as to the end. How do they propagate? So this is the kind of team we have, and we stay with the project program three to, I mean, uh, if we talk it in terms of the, uh, the cadence, so we will be with them uh, minimum two to three cadence. So cadence we have defined as three months. So, and also the doneness criteria need to be met. Till we are sure the business impact is felt and it is sustainable. So only then we exit. And of course, I, we have your finance, I mean, it's a, we have got the leadership support and it is fully funded. Fully so funded. if I can summarize what you were saying is, COE members are dedicated members working along with these product lines for a certain period of time, which is to the release range that you have, at least for three to four, two cadences, which is at about three to six months each. And till you find the end result or the goal is met, you are not going to come out of it. Yes. Excellent. And also we need to find a good time. Awesome. They need to have a local coach before I exit. Okay. All right, Arvind, uh, Society General. Right, so to set the context on what we are doing uh, with respect to Agile COE, uh, so Society General, 150 years old bank, European bank, right? The scale uh, of transformation is around 7,000 people on the IT side, right? And um, I'm, I'm open to, you know, hearing ideas uh, of uh, implementing an Agile transformation without an Agile COE as well. So I'm not gonna sort of uh, furiously defend that Agile COE is the only method, but it's worked for, for us. Um, the reason being that uh, Agile transformation is a bit different 
then other transformations that we do on the IT side, right? Uh, so what's different, right? One is uh, there is a lot of culture and the people angle to it b uh, besides processes and tools. And that's where you need to have people uh, who are not only experts, but change agents. So that's, that's what our agile COE houses uh, resides. Uh, people who are wearing two hats, uh, one, uh, one that being of an expert, the other being that of a change agent, right? And I love to have these change agents across the organizations, but uh, the, the way to have consistency and standardization is to house them in an agile COE, right? So uh, for a scale of around 7,000 people, uh, you know, we've been uh, fortunate to have uh, reasonable success uh, using this agile COE. The other reason why agile COE works for us uh, in, in the scale, uh, one was the culture part, like I said. The other, other is that uh, we are not an organization that has been born and brought up in an era where agile uh, is already main, was already a mainstream. Like I said, 150 million organization, a lot of unlearnings to be done, and uh, you know, and then uh, new learnings to be uh, you know for, for the entire organization. And that's where uh, we don't have people who've been born and brought up in, in that in that culture. So a lot of uh, learning and unlearning that needs to be done uh, in an, uh, in our context, right? So that's another reason why uh, why we went for. Um, uh, for for uh, agile transformation. Sec the the third thing is ob obviously the scale. We didn't want to do agile in pockets, uh, in a few teams here and there, in uh, across the globe. This transformation that we were trying to do uh, is across the globe. So you know, uh, not big fans of bi model. Uh, so at some point of time, we want the entire organization uh, to be agile in some sort of manner. You know, so, so they may have various degrees of maturity, but then uh, you know we want. More, more teams to follow agile principles. So that means that uh, largely the entire organization needs to be transformed and that's where the agile COE type of concept comes in handy. All right, anyone? Okay, so I think I can probably safely say that we're running the world's largest agile transformation, or at least probably one of. Uh, nearly half a million people will be going to agile. So IBM is, creating COEs at the moment. And we are creating central COEs and geographic COEs in different countries. So um, it, it, we, we actually call them something slightly different, but it's COE effectively. But are they effective for us? Well, I don't know, we're just creating them now. Um, we do have a use the same construct in many different environments, not just agile. Um, to mirror what Arvind was saying, the the fact that this is a cultural transformation more than it is a technology transformation is actually quite critical to us. And the ability to actually, uh, I don't like the word, but I will centralize that, uh, that, that, that what is that cultural pattern that we're trying to create. And a COE helps us, a COE construct helps us do that. And with like 400 and 400 plus thousand people around the world, it, it is not something that we can easily uh, distribute across individual teams and projects all across the world and say, well, go agile, yeah, it's up to you. We need to give them the level of support and the, and the guidance to make that cultural change and that mind shift that is necessary to be successful. So. My position, are COEs necessary? Mostly yes, but I think there no, are No, we'll get there, but currently, uh, if I heard you right, you have begun the journey, you think COE is the way to go, you still don't know the effectiveness of it. We'll circle back to that, but let's place it there. Uh, Nagendra. Yes. Um, I am an Agile change agent, uh, part of McAfee, formerly the we were known as. Um, I'm sure it's a lot of you know McAfee or Symantec in the antivirus world. And Intel bought us, and now we're um, officially known as Intel Security this since July 1st. So um, much before Intel uh, acquired us, we started uh, practicing Agile in small pockets. And, and what I've seen, the trend is that there is a desire to have a consistency. There's a desire to have a way of doing things and you know, one size fit all kind of a model. Um, but overall, I think if I were to hit the question straightforward, and it's it's th there's a desire out there to create a, a COE, um, you know, in different geos um, that we are distributed. Um, but I'm struggling to set this up, and and in in all aspects, 
Um, it may be technical, it may be process, um, it may be product uh, ownership or backlog management in general, right? So we have some success, um, not that we don't have any success at all, um, but, but there is a desire for sure that we need to have a way of doing things and, and, and that's where it loses the essence and, and it, at times it comes across as is CYE necessary or not. So I think we will get to that a little later as more questions come in. All right, great, thank you. So um, I work for Scaled Agile and the concept of a Agile Center of Excellence is good, although I necessarily would not call it an Agile Center of Excellence. It doesn't sound like is anything I want to be a part of. It sounds like some kind of corporate uh, mandate that is being imposed on me. Uh, that aside, uh, if the center of excellence is really a agile transformation group or agile working group, that's job is to help teams uh, transition to agile and there is resources and coaching and training that they provide, then I think that could be very helpful. The other thing that a COE needs to do is to have a senior leader that can crush problems as they arrive, maintain a backlog of impediments, organizational impediments that the teams or programs are now able to take care of on their own, uh, and then you know, keep track of those impediments, you know, create stories of, not necessarily have to be a story, but a backlog of things that need to be addressed. Then it could be useful, but all too often, uh, these things go the wrong way. And we, in our group, we were discussing that, what is an Agile COE? What is its purpose? You know, because some of us, as we're talking, realizing that we're talking about different things. Are we talking about a community of practice? Are we talking about, uh, here are the practices that we want you guys to implement and then you're mandating it on, on everyone. So it really depends what its, what its uh, charter is in terms of whether it's useful or not. All right, so which I think comes to our next biggest challenge. COEs are pretty much considered as process group policing. They're not much of, you know, they are all gurus, gurus sitting there, but are they contributing? So that's the biggest challenge. So is that what you were kind of inferring to as well, Nagendra, from your thing, okay. Yes, pretty much. Um, and every team is different, and I don't think I tell these guys, and you all experience this on a daily basis, and, and, and these practices work best for some teams, but not necessarily for you know, everybody else, right? But there is a, a, a should, there should be a forum where you can you know, come in, have a common flow of you know, sharing and learning, and, and which prompts for a, a, a center of excellence, and so be it, right? But, but it is you know, completely different than the way uh, you know, we usually think about, right, the Agile Manifesto or the 12 Principles and, you know, how it coined out and how it got butchered when it got industrialized, right? The essence is completely gone, right? So, so I mean, it, it's, it's completely different, the, the shift it has taken from what it was uh, originally intended to, right? So, so um, I struggle a lot from the process side of the world and while it worked for me there and it should be working for there, there's already a, you know, a fixed mindset it has to work for you as well, right? So, so that's where the struggle is. On the topic of process, I think they're not mutually exclusive. I think it's possible for a COE to be highly prescriptive. Thou shalt use this process in this way, and if you're, and we will audit, we'll, we'll, what was the example you gave at that table? There's a monthly audit and a checklist. Have you done all these things? If not, well, HR's gonna have a conversation with you. But I think it's possible to actually have a COE that isn't the process police, where it's, well, here's the manifesto, here's the values and the principles, and here's Scrum. Here's Kanban, here's TDD, FDD, XP, DSDM, anything. It's like, feel free, use any of these. We have coaches and people who are experts who can help you, guide you through that journey. We want you to be agile, not necessarily do agile. So I think it's possible, and this is something that IBM is doing, it's possible to have an agile COE, which is a uh, process enabler rather than the process police. So that's the intent, right? So I, I know it's like all these things start off with good intent at the organization level. <laughs> Intents don't translate into necessarily good <laughs> goods, right? What we want to see as benefits. I know Rani was actually nodding her head, it's something different. You kind of get into that topic of saying, so is there something specific that you can highlight that how you are doing differently when you say uh, things are bringing the benefits from a COE point of view? Uh, because I mean, I don't see them as a, they are the, to me, they are the software practitioner who have been becoming a change agent, okay? 
today, I mean, if I, uh, we start any program when we start with a deep diagnosis, deep dive into the impediments the business is facing. So that's the starting point. So it's for the business and what kind of changes that need to be introduced at the software practice level or system practice level. Do I need to uh, strengthen the CI-CD, continuous integration and continuous delivery? Or is, are they having issues in terms of uh, the tool? So they do a complete mapping and they identify what uh, need to be done in order to achieve what they want to achieve. So that's the way the coaches approach the, uh, so then, then it becomes, they are not the process groups, they are not here to impose the practices of Agile. It's not a corporate initiative, it is the program for their own benefit for them. And also linification. So less of what is necessary that would be done. Right. But we are in the regulated industry, so that need to be met. So we have quite some challenges in that area, but uh, we have been quite successful in that, I would say. So um, Arvin, quickly, you did touch upon that aspect of culture and mindset, and that's where your CEOs are bringing that benefit onto the table. One or two things, which is key things, that is they are actually making that culture change, culture shift, if can you cite some examples on that? Right, so, uh, you know, carrying on to a question, what you asked first and then the second question, uh, that perception will always remain that if you form a separate group, then that will be looked as if, you know, do you guys know any better than us and, you know, the questioning will happen. So that happens in our case as well, right? Uh, so what we try to do a little differently is that in the COA itself, uh, we have a charter, for lack of a better word, to role model agility, right? So, uh, what, what what we practice, you know, we preach. Uh, what we preach is what we practice, right? So, that takes away. Uh, so that brings in a lot of confidence and trust, and these guys are practitioners and have done so, right? And the the way the coaching happens to the team, right? Uh, so, any change, any model that you pick up. Uh, as an element, whenever you bring up a change, you have shock, and then you know you have fear, you have frustration, and then get you know, gets to a level of acceptance and 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 and, and commitment, right? So the coaches, in their capacities, uh, you know, move the teams, you know, in their different coaching styles of moving teams from that state of frustration to watching it for them, or watching it for business, and showing them that promised land that you know this is how the life is going to look like. And, and that depends on the individual capacity of the coaches, but that's emphasized a lot from the COA side that you bring in that 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 element in your coaching. Right. So I think so. Broadly, I think we still have challenges. We are still approaching. I, there is a certain amount of tolerance at the leadership management level to what, how we perceive and what we perceive, uh, but still challenges do exist, which also leads to the other challenge, which also talks about I don't have enough empowerment as a COE to be a COE. Uh, there are Organization goals are much different from the COE goals. The true capabilities which the COE brings to the table is far different from the ground reality, what is expected. Uh, how are you dealing with that as, a, as an aspect when you even put out a COE together? What's the core competency that you expect a COE member to have to propagate that change? Is there any specifics that you have done to make that happen? Right, so uh, if you're asking four competencies, of a person, any person in COE, I, I, I alluded to a few. I said, uh, you know, you, that person has to be an expert and has practiced those things in the past. He's not seen as somebody who has just theory knowledge and then he's imparting that knowledge. So, you know, being an expert, having been there, done that, right? Two, being a change agent, which takes more than being a practitioner. So, a lot of people can be practitioners, but you know, where, where the emotional quotient and the change management aspect comes into picture. So at least the people that we hire, we make sure that those people are not only practitioners, but are competent enough uh, change agents, right? So those are the two things that I can uh, definitely mention in terms of the competencies that we look for people who are in the Agile COE. So like in that, do you, have you actually brought in something specific? Aspiration level at least is there, but it is not, it's far from reality still. Exactly, that's my uh, challenge, right, as I speak. and, and you know, there has to be enough of learn and share mindset when they come into the COE model, right? Um, else it just becomes, you know, one way, you know, information flow and, and it be, uh, there's expectation for there has to be a practice or a pattern established and everybody else just go and apply it, right? So, so uh, 
that sharing part is where I see not enough happening. There, there is learning parts. If you set the agenda that this is what we're going to talk about, right? And a lot of people show up and, oh, well, okay, there is a agile fluency model that Diana Larson talks about, and let's go, let's go and learn about it. But, but, but that's where it kind of, you know, dwindles down after that. So, okay, we did apply it. Okay, so it's what is the learning out of it? So can we come back and share it to the community? That's not quite necessarily quite there yet. That's the challenge. If that happens more frequently, uh, believe me, and we will have a solution on our own, and COE will naturally grow and, and do the, uh, the intent what it is meant for. So there's still a lot of ifs. Um, question is, do we need a COE? I think there are a bunch of people have said no. So I'll leave it to the audience. If you are, how many of you are saying no here? Don't require a COE. Okay, so you're saying no, and how are you going to deal with it? We've heard the panelists, they've spoken about it, they are pro COE, they are empowering people, there are challenges. If you are saying do it, any, any uh, answers for that? How have you dealt with it? Sure, you want to come up here? Um, Thirty seconds. Yeah. Time boxing, we have a bunch of people who want to come. Sure. So one way to approach is uh, community of practice, okay, which is loosely connected volunteer-based participation where knowledge, it is open for knowledge sharing, learning from each other, sharing uh, failures as well as successes. It is not top-down, uh, not driven by top uh, management's uh, commands or their objectives, but it is more of people who are at the front, really connected with delivering value these people learning and sharing back their their successes and failures. I think that one way we have seen are working very well, and community of practice could actually also span not only from agile specific, but also from engineering practices and uh, focused on other learning areas as well. So you're saying more about virtual groups making this community of practice and hemp propagate the change. And they could very well meet in person as well, sure. uh, but people who are voluntarily joining and sharing. Okay. Any, any, any other solution? People have one comment on the community of practice. Um, great ideas. I love them. Community of practice are, are wonderful, powerful things. I gave a paper on that a couple of years ago in the US. If anyone wants a, uh, a, a template charter for an agile community of practice, just see me after this. I can give you a link and you can download one. All right. Any other way? Sorry. Well, one more point uh, on, you know, since we've experienced the community practice as well. So what worked for us is that uh, during the transformation, we take help of the COE, but for sustenance, right? So I'm not saying that the COE should there be there forever. It should be during the transformation, and then when you, you know, pass on the baton to the teams, that's where the community practice uh, helps in knowledge sharing and you know, evolving further. Okay, great. But 30 seconds. So whose job in the organization is to create change? Is it the management job or is it some separate unit there? We have organization full of managers. They should drive the change, not any separate unit. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, they should, but... Should, <laughs> aren't so, they? Uh, <laughs> Aren't they driving? So you want to make managers drive this change instead of yes. creating one more entity? Yes, like okay. this kind of a lean changes that you have there. The key thing is teach the managers, put the manager in driver's seat. Don't so let the managers do else. the work and yes. instead of just demanding work from people. Awesome. Okay. So as, as I mentioned, it's again, it's a maturity curve. Any transformation, you start with the focus team who would be doing it. And then, so you, I mean, again, this is not going to be an organization who is going to get involved forever. Then you get, get into a sustenance phase with the COPs and then the managers. So it's a part of the maturity curve. So most of us are still in the initial uh, curve in the transformation. There, definitely, we need COEs. So Ravi, what I was going to say was, it feels like we're mixing a couple of things together. You know, one of them is a community of practice. And that's where passionate people get together who want to learn from each other. So it might be a community of practice of scrum masters or product owners or release training engineers or what, whatever it might be. And then there's a group who helps roll out the transformation. And I definitely agree with the gentleman who said that managers 
uh, are the people who need to help drive the change, but they need to become lean agile managers yeah. first. So they have to learn first, and then everyone on the team is responsible for the transformation. They have to take ownership as well that they actually want to make it happen. But I'm really struggling with us mixing a center of excellence, which maybe his mission is to drive the transformation or help support the transformation, I should say, and then a community of practice, which has a completely different purpose. I, I totally agree. So community of practice and you actually decouple them, fair enough. But I think we are still struggling to find what is that sweet spot for that COE. We are still saying we want to get the managers there and do it, but how are we getting these managers? Because unless we crack this nut, uh, managers are going to be there. That's just our middle layer. But they don't have to be part of the COE. You know. Well, then the credibility of the COE is lost. Uh, so one of the struggles, at least in my experience, which has happened is there is a big perception difference, but uh, it could be perception, but then the reality is also that COEs don't bring enough to the table. That is one of the uh, challenge which is out there. And how do we enable this, this enabling group? So am I going to create monsters of them and build on COEs on top of COEs? And then this other question is, when you talk about culture and things like that, there are already several COEs existing in terms of their technology layers, et cetera, et cetera. Shouldn't CEO Agile be a fabric woven into them as opposed to this sitting as a tower in itself as a specialization and who does not connect with any of the technology because that's where the divide happens. Uh, so it's easy to get started on a smaller footprint, but when you get into layering it out across and dissect each of these challenges, especially on the cultural boundaries and things like that, how are we going to do it? Has anybody experienced any different way of attacking this problem? While, she, while she's coming up, I'd also point out that um, Agile CEOs aren't necessarily about a technical transformation. There's Agile HR, finance, right. marketing. So right. the, the, this is an enterprise global or organizational transformation. So it, it's, if, it's, if it was related to one specific group function, that's, that's one thing. But at an enterprise global level, it is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, I had the uh, Agile COE for Ford in Asia Pacific. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For Asia Pacific, not a global uh, uh, level. See, uh, I agree with whatever uh, they have said. So when our scale is very big, we have more than 10,000 uh, IT people, and 40% is in Asia Pacific. So when we started our Agile journey, we needed the Agile COE. But then we are getting into a place where uh, what Ravi talked about. So we are imbibing all these uh, best practices, I mean, if you can call them as best practices, into our other center of excellences, like Java Center of Excellence, which focuses on the technical practices. They are coming up to speed now. And we are getting into our uh, quality center of excellence. They are getting into speed now. And our project management expertise, they are getting into speed now. We cannot, we, we don't want to have the Agile COE forever because people think that we will, I mean, we are the Agile gurus and we have to have an answer for every single problem the company has. We will not be able to have. We want to bring up the entire organization and probably sustain it with the COPs and COIs for different practices, not only agile practices. That is not going to, that alone is not going to solve our problem. One quick comment on this. Um, you know, I, I, for some reason, um, the one part um, this lady mentioned about, um, you know, the COE, the, the, the need for existence for you know, long term versus short term is, 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 I struggle a bit there because there's always a churn, right? There is fresh people coming in. No, people who are experts, they're leaving, moving on to different organizations, taking up a new role. There's always this churn happening. I mean, that's the ground reality, right? So, so to me, you know, center of excellence, again, how you look at it, what is that you're going to go in there for, what's in it for me, right? Um, so I go get the gyan and then, you know, automatically I become an expert and apply it back to your team. Well, I mean, that's, again, a charter and an expectation. How you, you know, uh, do a better job in setting that expectation is very important, right? But uh, in general, if there is a tendency to have a COE, I believe, uh, you know, especially an organization of that large as Ford or Intel security I come from and many of us were representing in the panel, right? There is, 
always uh, in a churn in there. So there is a need for a COE is what I would comment on. Okay. Anybody else has found figured out a solution for this? Any differently than what we have discussed here? So, uh, I'll take another question here. Uh, we run out of the challenge, the top at least. Um, one of the things what is expected out of a COE is to also provide bodies, right? Um, like what most of the time the demand happens when you are scaling, when you are transforming. I also expect a lot of the delivery owners would come and say, you give me the capacity or the capability, ca along with capability, the capacity so that I can endure this change. I can't go and find it, uh, figure this out from the market or it is going to take a longer time. Uh, has anybody experienced it? How exactly have you dealt with it? If you have dealt, if you had similar challenges. That's probably a major part to um, a service organization like IBM is, is um, finding those uh, absolute, uh, the best of the best and having them available and it, project over here, project over there, this country, that country, who may not have the capability in country uh, or certainly within the organization, within the country. And the COA can provide this isn't a transformational COE, this is, like you say, an, an ongoing COE, can provide those, those skills and capabilities and do a sort of a resource management role. Um, it, there's a care to be taken that it's not another PMO, right? but, but I think there's definitely a place, especially in service organizations, for, for those sort of functions. Uh, I would look at it completely differently. I would say that's most welcome because I, I, this is an opportunity to rotate people around because in my COE currently I have business uh, people who have come in as coaches and also coaches can go as business people. So that's a natural transition, I would see that. And uh, today I completely encourage that. So that uh, if, if we want to have uh, process, I mean the practices to be much more, uh, I wouldn't call it standardized, but uh, much more aligned, then this is the best way of dealing with uh, businesses. That's the way I put it. So, so to me, it's like if people are coming in voluntarily into the COE, you have created that space for them, and that's certainly welcome. But how does people perceive in a larger organ? How would they see their career path being part of a COE? And you know, how how have you? you know, even establish their career aspirations of being a COE so member. So as part of our transformation, this is one of the earlier activities we have done because as I said, it's a transformation. I have multi multidisciplinary team in that. We have had a huge HR work stream with global HR working on identifying the agile roles, what their career lattice would be, as well as including the coaches. Not only coaches, but the scrum master, RTEs, POs, what would their career lattice would be. So that has been published along with the job description and everything. So that really helps people to give the transparency and also the visibility this role gets. Because often, I mean, you are into a product unit, you get to know only that product deeper and deeper for a product owner. If you have the capability become, to become a change agent, you have the opportunity to see many more pro products and that would enhance that person knowledge and when he, he or she goes back into the businesses. So that's how we have positioned and that's what we are encouraging in the company. Anybody else? Another uh, like pitfall what we observed is, uh, say for example, you start with one drive, say for example, a wave, you know, one for 100 people and other things, then you identify champions who are like the equivalent of COE. Then uh, the other uh, wave you identify. The problem what happens is uh, when you try to separate them out as that, so the perception of what it goes is, unless until those kind of things are very well established. Right. Uh, very few organizations actually make that homework first, be prepared and then jump into the transformation. Many people jump and then figure out that's an impediment and you know, it cannot work out. So in those cases, actually, it is very uh, catastrophic, where I think, what is that I don't have and you have as a champion, and that creates the divide between the people who are potential change agents and uh, their aspiration towards moving faster would have been slowed down. So that's the practical uh, experience I have been. Okay. 
So if I can quickly summarize this whole thing, I think there is a need of agile COEs. We agree to it. There is a constant churn. I think we need to keep that, but empower them in the right way. Uh, figure out what things you do, and this is for the long haul, and identify the right goals and aspiration needs, put them into perspective, and then you would be able to go through it, as opposed to diving in and having calling it as connotating a COE for the sake of COE with no empowerment and goals associated, it's not, it's going to be catastrophic. Would that be a fair assessment of that? Awesome. So with that, I think we will close this panel discussion. Thank you very much for the panelists and you for participating. This is awesome. Thank you very much.